Welcome, Ravens. I can't think of a better way to end your week than with a special edition of ONW Now. I'm Ron Stanley. And I'm Dima Matthews. Today we've got an update on the Westboro protests, your weekly sports update from game day, and everything else that's happening around the school for the start of second semester. In light of recent events at Northwest last semester, the infamous Westboro Baptist Church had planned to hold a protest at Olathe Northwest this morning. After calling Olathe Northwest a cesspool and sodomite infested in an official memo, the Topeka based church made it known that they would be picketing just off school property. It was made known to the public on Thursday that they would not be wasting their time by yelling at high schoolers after all. What a shame. Just as the freezing move phase had cried, as craze had died down, another treat had caught fire. And yes, even though it's winter, people are going out of their way to eat ice cream that is negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's take it to Addison Smith and Sarah Miguel to see, for the inside scoop on Frozen. There is over 1,000 different types of ice cream around the world and many ways to create your own. Here at Frozen, they combine science with one of America's favorite sweet treats to put a fresh new look on ice cream. <laughs> Just as the freezing moo craze has died down in Kansas City, a new cold treat has caught fire. Frozen is introducing Dragon's Breath, a unique snack that has been combined with nitrogen so you can have fun while eating. Frozen is the newest ice cream place and owner Ozmai Kayer opened up the business to bring families from the community together with fresh new ice cream you can make your own. My favorite part is like I just see people whenever they first walk in, hey, I'm going to create more own ice cream, you know, because every place you go, you have to choose whatever they have on their menu. But here, basically, you have 32 different flavors to choose from, you have 24 different mixing, and you can come up with your own ice cream and even freeze your ice cream in front of you. You will have the freshest ice cream in the world. If you want a fun experience during the new year, head to Frozen off of 151st and Black Bob. For Addison Smith, this has been Sarah Miguel. Have you ever heard of Scholars Bowl? Well, neither had we until a couple of weeks ago. We sent Riley Kramer out to find out how it works and just how smart one has to be in order to participate. What title is given to a person who studies birds? Andrew Booz, a senior at Olathe Northwest and president of Scholars Bowl, has been a part of this club for all four years. I heard on the announcements and decided to join it because I was like, this sounds cool, this sounds like me and it's been very enjoyable. A lot of people are unaware of what Scholars Bowl really is, but since last year, the club has grown a tremendous amount. So Scholars Bowl is a quiz bowl type competition. In the quiz bowl, you have these buzzers and a team of students, and you uh, buzz in to answer the questions, and if you get them right, you get points. Each round consists of 16 questions, all regarding different subjects. So in Scholars Bowl, they have different categories of questions in each round that are based on academic subjects like science, social studies, or math. And so you have to have people that can answer those questions. Scholars Bowl is classified as Acacia Activity and has both JV and varsity divisions. Six people are allowed to compete at each tournament. Regionals are on February 1st, and that's just the 6A schools in our region. So we would go round robin against them and then the top four advance to state. While tournaments have many different questions, Scholars Bowl is a good way to learn more and show your knowledge for specific topics. Right. Um, you don't have to be a genius to do this. I mean, there are some people there who are, but you just need to know something about one sort of academic subject, like, I mean, history, if you know a lot about history or if you can do math really fast or whatever. You don't need to be super good to do it. You can just join and have fun with everyone else. For ONW Now, this has been Riley Kramer. After a few years without it, the ONW Chess Club is back and better than ever. English teacher Mr. Harris believes it's important that Chess Club is a part of the Olathe Northwest culture and students should get involved with activities that provide skills and can be used in and out of the club. I'm excited that it's back because I think chess is good for kids. Uh, chess is, is a real problem solving, uh, really, um, I don't know, it involves kind of a lot of high level thinking when you play that game. Experience is not required and students are encouraged to contact Mr. Harris with any interest they might have. Next up, let's take it to Game Day Northwest for your sports update and a basketball recap. Hey Ravens, welcome to Game Day Northwest. I'm Jack Clayton alongside Rosie Klosner. This week we have coverage of girls and boys basketball, swimming, and wrestling. Tuesday night, the Lady Ravens basketball team looked to extend their five-game win streak against the Pioneers of Leavenworth. On Tuesday, January 9th, the Lady Ravens basketball team went head-to-head -head against Leavenworth. 
Early on, Sarah Beth made, a, made it past the defenders to get the Ravens on the board. Later on, Sarah Beth would strike again, hitting a three-pointer. The Ravens began to mount a comeback. The Ravens were fighting back, giving Leavenworth a run for their money. Mary Weaver dribbles past the defenders and shoots a two-pointer, putting the Ravens in the lead. Liz Thomas from deep shoots a three-pointer, putting the Ravens in the lead. Both offense and defense were giving their all on the court, shooting three-pointers and taking away the ball when Leavenworth held possession. The Ravens did good on shooting and maintaining the ball the majority of the game, with the Ravens winning 59-46. to The Lady Ravens' next Sunflower League game will be at Lawrence Free State on Friday, January 12th. The game will start at 5.30. Seriously, come out and cheer on your Lady Ravens. The Ravens weren't done just yet, as it was the men's turn to take the floor to keep their undefeated record alive. After winning the tip, Jack Parks gets the ball down in the post. He kicks it back out to Jackson Nicodemus, who nails a three-pointer for the Ravens' first points. Coming from behind in the second quarter, Mitch Midyet catches and shoots for another three-pointer to take the lead. In a tight game, during the third quarter, Kyle Sheever delivers a great pass to Jack Parks in the corner for a three-pointer. The Ravens extend their lead. In the final minutes of the game, Mitch Midyet catches a pass off the tipped hands of Jack Parks and lays it in for a final score of 43-41. The men's team will also battle Lawrence Free State on Friday as they take on a tough offensive Firebird team. Their game will start at 7 p.m. Don't miss it. Tuesday, the boys' swim and dive team continued their road to state as they hosted Lawrence and Shawnee Mission South at PRT. Nathan Peck took first and qualified for state in the 200 freestyle. Will Kelly took second and qualified for state in the 500 freestyle. And Jacob Wheatman took second and qualified for state in the 100 breaststroke. Aiden Hurley and Daniel Wheatman took second and third in the 500 free. Aiden Hurley, Jared Hardigan, and Jacob Souders took second, third, and fourth in the 100 free. Joe Claycomb, Bradley Davis, and Kyle Furman took first, second, and fourth in diving. Harrison Mallory, Ashton Weaver, and Jacob Jared Hardigan took first, second, and fourth in the 100 back. Daniel Wheatman, Drew Bond, and took second, third in the, in the 100 fly. Come support our Ravens at, at our senior night on Thursday at PRT. The boys will host their next meet tonight, tonight against Blue Valley Northwest in Olathe West. On Saturday, the wrestling team traveled to Bonner Springs High School for the Bonner Springs Invitational. Caden Howard took first in the 106 weight class, and Trevor Adam grabbed third in the 170 class. Congrats, guys. Their next meet will be on Friday and Saturday as the team will take it to the mats again at Newton High School for the Newton Invitational. Football has an exciting announcement coming this week. We now toss it over to Nick Lopez for the inside scoop. The o &W football team will announce their new head coach for the upcoming season. All football players should meet in the flex seater during Power 50 on Friday. The administration is excited to announce a new coach, but waiting for district approval. Now I'm going to take it to Cole Manning. I'd like to see him come in and make an impact on our program right away. Thank you, Cole, for what you think about coach. Now I'm going to send this back over to Jack Clayton and Rosie Klausner. Thanks, Nick. That's it for Game Day Northwest. Let's send it back to Ronan Demma. Eric Martin, an ONW freshman and accomplished musician, is holding a benefit concert tonight in the auditorium. This benefit concert will benefit Molly Bjorkman and her family. Her mother is suffering from cancer right now, so the money will help benefit that. I will be playing a sonata by Mozart as well as a sonata that I composed. Um, I just started uh, messing around on piano at an early age and I um, eventually started taking piano lessons and progressed from there. It will be um, January 12th, it's a Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, I hope to see you there. The concert is free of charge, but donations are greatly appreciated. They would love for everyone to show out. We hope to see as many people as possible at the Free State tonight for some quality Sunflower League basketball. That's going to do it for us today. For Demma Matthews, this has been Roan Stanley. Have a great four-day weekend, Northwest.